I'm Melissa. And I'm John. We're with Little House of Big. And we just got back from our very first RV rally. Nomad Fest. 2018. We'll tell you all about it. Stay tuned. We didn't buy our tickets until end of February or March. I can't really remember when that was. Uh, and that takes a lot of planning. I mean, it's been in my head a lot. And if your relationship is like our relationship, one of you is a planner. One of you is not. And that has its own tricks and, and it has its own pluses and minuses, sources of frustration, all of that stuff. So I'm the planner and I plan all of our trips. I make sure we are ready to go, where we're going, the map, all of that stuff. So I've had this in my head for months and months and months. Um, so I had expectations and uh, I just wanted to tell you about that. And John doesn't have those same ex expectations. So he's a little quieter on this point. Yeah, and more <laughs> go with the flow. Hey, we bought the tickets, great. You know, we'll stop, get some grub and mm -hmm. uh, head out. Yeah. You can see how this works out. <laughs> Anyways, um, so in my mind, I was planning and thinking and like, you know, okay, we're going to this little town in Texas. What's the journey going to be like? How long is it going to take us? What's the best route? What do you mean we're staying on the fairgrounds? We're okay with no hookups, but what does that look like? We're going to be with all of these people that we don't know. It's a little scary. To me, it felt a little like the buildup to going into middle school, you know, are they gonna like us? <laughs> do we have the right kind of rig? Do we have the right kind of truck? Do we have the right kind of equipment? It was all very nerve wracking in my head. So uh, I have to tell you, pleasantly surprised. It was nothing like going into middle school. <laughs> no, we, everyone was totally welcoming to everyone else. It was really quite the community. It was, it was wonderful. But we had a little bit of a snafu. Again, the planner, this is why you have a planner and why you have somebody who goes with the flow. Because of course, I had planned it all out. We made our journey out of town and about an hour and a half out of town. Yeah, we, uh, we cracked a high pressure fuel line for uh, the number four injector on our Cummins diesel for our Dodge Ram. Yeah. Which as it turns out, was apparently a very common situation. Uh, had we known we would have carried a spare, uh, we did discover that it's common enough that just about every parts store on the planet carries the number four fuel line for number the Cummins four. diesel. <laughs> they don't carry the others. Not the number uh, six. No, no, but they do carry the number four because it's uh, it's a reoccurring issue. Uh, Cummins has since fixed that issue, um, but our truck is a little old. You know, it's a 2006, so it's uh, it's pre it's pre pre mod if you want to call it that. But, it, you know, I, honestly, it all worked out the way it was supposed to, even though it was a little stressful and we had a couple of firsts, like, you know, sleeping in a dirt lot off the side of the highway overnight that was very busy and kind of unnerving. And um, we had complete strangers offering to help us and we had voices that came together to guide us. And by the time we got down there, uh, the rain in Wellington had stopped and... People came out on Friday, everybody was in a good mood because it stopped raining and the fairgrounds had started to dry out. And so if we'd been there on Thursday, it still would have been fun, but everybody was a little more apprehensive, a little more uh, in their own rigs because it was just raining so hard. Yeah. So it worked out perfectly for us. We got a great spot. Yeah, for us, we didn't get drenched. No. <laughs> we did not get drenched. No. And the truck got fixed, 15 minute fix. and. Mm -hmm. You know, a few hours delay, and it all worked out just fine. Worked out really well. We uh, we arrived on the fairgrounds. We were guided and directed as we pulled into town by people who you know who would see an RV coming and go, "This is this is your turn." Uh, we got in through the gates. We were greeted with you know warm smiles and happy yeah. people, uh, and uh, and 
then uh, then Andrew shows up with his, Andrew and Tony. Andrew and Tony show up um, with or on a four wheeler that uh, was loaned to the festival uh, by a resident of Wellington. They they loaned the festival two of their four wheelers. That's just how a great example of, of the people in Wellington. Yeah, it was awesome. So it was great. We arrived and uh, to smiles and we're so glad to be here and. We wore the right shoes, and we had the right hair, and we had the right rig, and the right truck, and the right equipment, and yeah, nobody, it was awesome. Nobody cared that our, our rig is 13 years old and has hail damage. You know, they don't care. Uh, you know, they were just happy to, to, to see more people. And we had a great time having uh, coffee and uh, experiences with, with many of the camp hosts. It was just a, it was a great experience just pulling in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we signed up to go to uh, Nomad Fest uh, because part of our issue of being part-time RVers is we have full-time jobs. So we don't have unlimited time to go to Quartzsite in January, February and spend a couple of weeks and take a couple of days to get there. So we have to pick and choose where we spend our time and our camping um, and our vacation time. And there's always family that wants part of that as well, right? <laughs> we can't go festival to festival. so. We had to. We made a choice back in the beginning of this year that this was going to be part of our vacation time, and I have to tell you that again, it was in my head a little bit because we're not full time. How well would we fit in? Well, I have to tell you that this community is so wide and vast and deep that they just don't care because there's a lot, everybody's doing it their own way. If we are only going to do it part time for now, but there's some people they call it. Um, part-time full-time they do it full-time for six months of the year and they go then they go home um, it was just it was really neat to be included into a group that's story is about full-timing but we're not full-timing and there were a lot of people who are not full-timing so I love that about the community and the open arms and come be with us while you can and we'll catch up with you when we next see you so from check-in to departure it was a great time. Yeah, I can't even tell you what my favorite part was. Um, I would love to say the community, and the community was awesome. Um, everybody was there for the right reasons, right? They were there to connect with people. They were there to, they were there to, sorry dogs. <laughs> they were there to connect with people. They were there to learn. They were there to um, just be part of a community. I think we as humans, long to belong someplace to be seen to be heard and uh in this world that we're in right now it's just so divided everybody was there for the right reasons right um they're there to be part of a community a community that looks out for each other you know we had people reach out to us we were posting on facebook and in the epic nomad um, dot life app um, that you know we needed help did anybody know of any mechanics that were on the road or whatever we had somebody volunteer to drive he didn't have any idea how far to come get us and our rig just so that we could still attend yeah 12 I mean, hour drive one he way had no idea where we were or who we were and it was just total stranger phenomenal gonna come get us so I think in this world of that is so divided currently it's so nice to um, find a community that spends more time around campfires and less time shouting at each other or judging each other. And it was just, I didn't realize that that was part of the message that the creators and the people who were behind this, that that was their intention until we started going to the breakouts. Yeah. And it was incredible to see people who came from corporate and brought their corporate skills to an idea of living a life of connectivity. And they have created Epic. Empowering, positive. <laughs> Inspiring but, and collaborative. So, mm -hmm. And they mean it. They mean it every step of the way. And it showed up in everything that they did. Now we're not going to even try to you know, video what Nomad Fest was like because there are way bigger channels and way be better videographers than us who are telling the story and we were going to put all of those links below so please
please, please go check it out because there's just such a bigger story here. But John and I just feel really strongly about acknowledging the people who put this together because their efforts were huge, just huge. Um, months, months of work to plan Nomad Fest, which was a, uh, a festival based around the release of a documentary about the full-time RV lifestyle. What it is like to live as an RV nomad. And what, why? Why would you want to do that? Why? You know, why, why these people gave up high-paying jobs and careers. Uh, homes, homes, big homes. Homes, yeah, homes next near, to, near family. Uh, they gave up everything. They sold everything to go out on the road. And what they discovered is pretty magical. Mm -hmm. I was just really impressed. I was just really impressed that they didn't just roll in. They found this little town, Wellington, Texas, that has this awesome theater that has been renovated. And they didn't just roll into town and start making demands. They rolled into town and said, what can we do to help? How can we build this little town up? How can we be you know, a voice? for small town America and this movement and how can this work together. They bought um, cotton from the local fields and sent it out so that the souvenir t-shirts were created from the cotton of the county where Nomad Fest 2018 was held. I mean, down to the smallest of things. Every time somebody was up on stage, they said, go out and spend money in this town. If you see locals, you tell them thank you. You be nice. You do not leave a mess. You be, you know, be gracious. And every time we came across a local, they were so grateful. They were thinking us. I know it's crazy. It's crazy. They allowed, they allowed hundreds of us to come in, in uh, invade their fairgrounds, invade their town, and uh, you know, take it over for for four days and five days. And they were thanking us for. Wrecking their fairgrounds. <laughs> well, yeah, the fairgrounds were left in really in, in pretty good shape. Well, but yeah, yes. one area was. But they were thanking us for you know for for being what I would have thought would have been kind of an inconvenience. There were restaurants that stayed open. Yeah. That yeah. normally stayed well, normally closed on the weekends. They stayed open. That's right. Just so that uh, so we all could have a place to go eat lunch. It was just it was that was that's my favorite. Pretty special town, Wellington, Texas. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay, baby. I know. It was pretty special. So, like we mentioned, uh, I I went into it with very few expectations. I expected it would probably be a good time. I expected that we would see. A movie, <laughs> right? The world premiere of this documentary. Mm -hmm. I expected that we would have an opportunity to meet some uh, some operators and owners of some very large YouTube channels. Uh, I expected that we would learn quite a bit about how to grow our channels, uh, how to improve our blog, how to uh, plan and prepare for mm -hmm. the possibility that we may go full time someday. Um, and you know, every one of those expectations was met, often exceeded. The amount of knowledge um, in the presenters was huge. And, you know, even if it was something that you were not totally 100% into, solar and batteries. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying I'm not so much into solar and batteries. I sat through that presentation and I walked away with just interesting um, tidbits of information and knowledge and you know just being really impressed with Battleborn batteries and their mission for doing it better and um, you know the just little tips like making sure that your YouTube uh, videos are longer than 10 minutes who knew <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? So, uh, you know, down to the big pieces of knowledge, down to the little pieces of knowledge that make a difference in who we are on YouTube or in blogs or vlogs, and who we are in real life. 
and what is our mission in real life? And um, again, almost every single time uh, Gary Quimby got up on stage, he said, we lift you up, you lift us up. I love that. Yeah. So the big question everybody was asking, when's number two? Yeah. <laughs> Their organizers are like, whoa, 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 we don't even know there's going to be a number two. Slow down, slow down. We'd yeah. like to rest a little bit. Poor Caitlin Morton. She did all of the organization and making sure everybody got into town and out of town and had their lanyards and, oh, my gosh. I think she had some help. Major, of course, but she, she was the brains behind it. And major props, Caitlin, because that is a huge, huge job. And yes. I've never been part of a corporate event that is quite that well run. That was incredible. It was. It so was. So when is number two? Well, you know, they threw... Uh... They threw a date out there about uh, you know a few days after like the days. <laughs> it, was, it was like well okay we're gonna do this and uh, Wellington Texas wants us back and uh, so we're gonna do it October twenty fourth through November first yeah. twenty nineteen yeah that should be fun Halloween be there be square that's right so if you would like to attend Nomad Fest with to, us. <laughs> and our new best friends. The cool kids. <laughs> no, yeah, we maybe not. Know. If you would like to attend Nomad Fest, check yeah. out the links below. Yeah. We uh, are going to put a lot of links below of other videos um, about Nomad Fest 2018, about the app, the website for Epic Nomad, um, and then, of course, just some random things that. Yeah, Facebook, YouTube, <laughs> yeah. So if there's any information that's that's lacking in any of those links, you have questions, or you just want to ask the question and not go to those links, drop it in the comments, and we will do our best to answer it. If we can't answer it, we know the right people who can. We'll get that information for you and get it back out to you. Uh, while you're down there, you know, share a few comments about the video, if you like. Hit the subscribe button after you hit the subscribe button. Uh, please hit that bell. Ring that bell so that you get notified when we have another video. Yes, and I do want to say that it is about um, it is about the community. Yeah, RV RVing is always about the community. Um, it's incredible what the community that is out there already. Uh, we have family friends who did it for twelve years long before the internet was out there and community could be found, and they created. They created, they found such a great RVing community that um, they were really sad to have to leave it after 12 years. So uh, I just want to encourage you, if you're thinking about, even thinking about doing it part-time, come check out RV Nomads, even if it's only on their social pages, because the information that is there is information that you need. Yes. You know, what to take, what to buy, what to think, how to do it. But you do not have to be a full-timer in order to enjoy the information, in order to enjoy the community. We were fully accepted in, and I couldn't be happier about that. Yeah. And the documentary, it's uh, it'll be released here mid-November. Uh, it will be on sale at uh, Amazon and available through, I believe, Netflix. However, I think it's, yeah. however, if you want to watch it free, um, follow that link to the Nomad social media platform and sign up and you'll have an opportunity to watch yeah. that free of charge. It's, it's great. It's a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. So subscribe. Hit the like button. And like us. Please. <laughs> Comment. <laughs> Share us with your friends and family. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Here's a little slideshow just for you. Coffee out. Coffee out. the contest and the winner of that contest got to pick whose RV they did this to. <laughs>